This episode of Own the Gray is brought to you by I Am. Discover your unique talents, realize your potential, and align to your path. Take the first step to uncover your life purpose by visiting deborahjones.ca slash courses. Western society has it all wrong. Getting old isn't about fading away quietly and not disturbing anyone in the process. Instead, it's a time to celebrate life's most important stage, being an elder. Being an elder means sharing your years of wisdom to enhance lives. This might mean you'll need to shift your own perspective on aging, so stay tuned to learn the real truth about life over 50. Welcome to On the Gray, a podcast to dispel the notion that aging is undesirable and setting new positive attitudes. I'm Deborah Jones, and I believe you can be vibrant and healthy throughout the best years of your life. My next guest is on a mission to see that everyone's later years are filled with profound fulfillment and fun. She has researched aging for over 10 years and taught classes at the University of Denver on growing old. A lecturer, elder, author, and thought leader, she is here today to share her philosophies on healthy aging. Kathleen O'Brien, welcome to Own the Gray podcast. Well, I'm delighted to be here, Deborah. Thanks so much for asking me. It's great to have you, especially since I've learned that you've written a book recently, and we're going to get into that a little bit later. But um, Kathleen, on your website, you said that aging is the best thing that ever happened to you. And I totally agree. And I believe that we've been handed a bunch of lies about what to expect in our later years. What truth haven't we been told? I think what we haven't been told is that this phase of our our lives, these later years, this maybe you would call it your final stage or your third act, is of profound importance. And the reason it is, is that it's only when you're older that you can take the experience, the perspective, the maturity and the wisdom and really answer some of the big questions of life. You can't really do this when you're younger. Oh, I mean, you can be prescient and study philosophy and maybe understand some things about what it means to be human. But really, only when you have all those years behind you, can you begin to put the pieces of the puzzle together? That is, who am I? What is my role here? Have I lived my life the way I wanted to live it? And if not, what can I do to change now to answer questions that are, I guess, esoteric, like, you know, what's life all about? So this is why being old is such an important time in our lives. It's such an important place to be. And we've been told to be young forever and to not look at that. And and we even recoil from the word old, which in many civilizations is considered a mantle of honor. We have that upside down. Yeah, you, you've done a lot of studies uh, and philosophies and civilizations and cultures. And what can you tell us about aging in different cultures? Well, it's interesting. I One of the stories I talk about in my book is this time when Ram Das, who was a thought leader and was kind of an edgy kind of guy, used to teach at an Ivy League school and then kind of went off to find himself. But he really immersed himself in spirituality and he spent many years in India. Then he came home and was here in the U.S. for 
I don't know, a couple of decades. So he decided to go back to India and see this little village where he had spent so much time. So he takes this circuitous route and a plane and a bus and he finally gets there and he sees an old friend in the crowd and the old friend comes running up to him and said, oh, Ram Das, you're old. <laughs> and Ram Das's first reaction because he had been living in the West for a couple of decades was, well, that's not very nice. And he sort of pulled away and he said, well, I think I take good care of myself. I don't think I look old. And he said, no, no, Ram, you don't understand. You are old now, so we will respect you. We will listen to everything you have to say. You come back as an honored person. And, I, you know, to use a... a a kind of a colloquial phrase that, that blew him away. <laughs> yeah, unexpected for sure. That in this in this society, the Western society, we don't even have a concept of respecting elders. I mean, I we see it in TV shows all the time, and and I cringe when when I hear the way that they treat the elders. And that's basically how we all learn is by seeing what's around us and what people are doing. And the studies and and the work that you've been doing and the work that I'm doing with Own the Gray podcast is to say that no, this is not right. You know, other societies have got this right. They know how to respect their elders and. As you said before, at the very beginning, we've got bags of wisdom now that we didn't have before. And why aren't we tapping into this wisdom, this, this fountain of wisdom? Forget about the fountain of youth that, that society is <laughs> after. It should be the fountain of wisdom. I mean. Yeah, well, I think, Deborah, we don't really value it. This is a very youth-oriented society. It's sort of a can-do society. And that's one of the good things about the West and, and our country in particular. We have a lot of very ambitious people who get out there, who, who are busy, who accomplish things. But we put so much store in that. We haven't really been able to see that there are other stages in the human life cycle. And I don't think it helps older people to continue to buy into the idea mm. that if I just got a facelift, if, if I just went out and bicycled more or maybe entered that marathon or, or maybe skydived, uh, you know, then I could prove that I'm still young. And so we, we, in part, we don't value being older because I think older people have to demand that respect. When we stop emulating teenagers and mm -hmm. saying, well, you know, that's what it's all about, people will start to look at us differently. And also, we have this great fear of aging. And we have and it goes along with our fear of death, which you again don't see in a lot of what I call enduring societies, Native American societies, African societies, Eastern societies that look at death very differently. Mm -hmm. And all of this really began, believe it or not, with, with the advent of graveyards. Graveyards were something that they are around the world, we see them. But when they began in the West, people stopped burying people in their backyards and started burying them in graveyards because they really wanted to separate themselves from death. They didn't want to mm. think about it. They didn't want to see, you know, grandpa's little tombstone out there in the backyard every day. Mm. And then uh, that also meant that the people who were nearing death or who looked like they were on the down slope, hmm. but they weren't real fond of them either. It's kind of like, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to deal with older people who may begin to exhibit physical characteristics that show that they're slowing down. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want that in my life. And instead, you see in other cultures, and certainly in ancient cultures, but you see them in, again, the, the enduring cultures today, there's a real sense that, that those cultures respect the idea that life is finite, it has a beginning, it has an end, 
And there are stages that humans go through and each stage is as important as the other. In this mm -hmm. culture, we kind of say, if you're not productive, and by that we, we tend to use productivity as a measure. And a lot of that has to do with garnering wealth. If you're not out there contributing to the GNP, you're not productive. Other societies don't see it that way. And so it's an uphill climb for older people to, um, to change society and to try to look at the world a little differently. Yeah, it's, it's almost like because our society doesn't talk about death, unless you have to, um, that the fear, like it's when we feel the fear, we recoil, right? That's, that's, that's a basic human instinct. We, we don't want to feel uncomfortable. We want to feel comfortable. And so if we don't talk about death, we don't have to face it. If we don't address um, the stage of older life, then we don't have to face death and our fear. So you know, when, once we start talking more about, as you said, the stages, so, so there's, there's your birth, there's your childhood, there's, you know, you get married, there's a stage there. Between getting married, and maybe there might be retiring as a celebration, but what kinds of celebrations do we have in our later stages of life, other than our birthday? Right? It's, there's, there's nothing really um, to, to celebrate is what society is telling us. With the Red Tent, uh, the Red Tent is a women's gathering that, that I started about six years ago, bringing all different uh, ages together and listening to different perspectives in their stories and seeing that there's so much wisdom that can be shared that we're not tapping into makes me continue to do that, to bring people together so that we can listen to each other's stories so that we don't have to be fearful of something that we don't know about, right? It's if we know about it, we don't have to fear it. Cool. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I loved when you talked about rites of passage there. We don't really celebrate these stages. Uh, and there are many cultures around the world that do celebrate getting older. And we don't, in part because we, as you said, and to use your word, and I used it too, we recoil from the idea of aging. We don't even like the word old. Rather than celebrating, oh, I turned 80 or whatever year and make it momentous and make it important in your life. Mm -hmm. Again, when we as older people start doing those things, younger people are going to start looking at us differently. Well, they're going to think to themselves, maybe there is something to this. <laughs> Yeah. Instead of, you know, when you go to buy a card for somebody and it's always, and I'm not saying you can't have fun with age and that we should take everything so seriously, but the cards aren't about garnering wisdom and maturity and, oh, you finally reached this milestone. They're all about little jokes about aging and the things that you can't do. Mm -hmm. um, and rather than the things that you can do, which again is to, to give this advice. You have all these years of knowledge, give your wisdom to those around you. How valuable is that to our society? And mm -hmm. we behave as if it has no value. And we're really missing out because uh, we don't see things uh, surrounding old age very clearly. Yeah. Why, why do you think that younger people don't, don't respect the elders of society? Well, I think that in part has to do with the fact that they see them as uh, humans who are becoming more frail, uh, humans who aren't as hip and with it as they are, uh, they fail to see that, you know, being young is wonderful. And I'm not going to take anything away from a younger person. I enjoyed my youth. Being young is such an important part of the human life cycle. But we also need to underscore the fact that each stage has importance. 
And being old is important too. And again, when older people make fun of aging, again, I'm not saying you can't have fun with it, but it's sort of denigrated, I guess, is, is the better word. And don't use the word old. And you know how you'll say to someone, you know, well, I just turned, well, I'm 73, Deborah. And so, you know, when I say that I'm 73, people say, oh, well, that's not old. And my response is, it is. I, I don't mean it's very old, but it's, I'm not an ingenue. I'm not a kid. And I don't want to be a kid. I want to be where I am because these years have been extraordinary for me. I mean, yeah. I really see the world differently and I, and I have much more patience with everyone and most important, I have more patience with myself. Ah. <laughs> the self-knowledge is so important and it just flows when you're older. It really does. Yeah. I, I remember when I was nearing 50 and I all I knew was what society tells you about aging. And but I wasn't willing to take that as my truth. And I wanted to look into it a little more. And I found a book, um, Clarissa Pinkola Estes, How to Be an Elder. It was a, an audio book. And I thought to myself, I'm a fraud just buying this book because I'm not an elder. Uh, you know, <laughs> I didn't think I was until I learned that an elder is simply somebody that has more knowledge than the, the next person. That's really what an elder is, someone that has the wisdom. And so I started reframing the way I looked at myself as somebody that had wisdom, that had something to share in society. And I could not wait to turn 50. And so I've just celebrated my 55th birthday. So I'm now officially a senior, which blows me away. Oh, um, that's but great. I, but I am so, so uh, glad to be in this stage because I see the the benefits of stepping into yourself, right? To be yourself. I feel like I'm, I'm starting to be alive now. I'm starting to live my life the way I want to on my terms. And I am excited. A friend of mine, a very good friend of mine just turned 60 and she's excited too. And so do you see that things are changing in society now? Do you see that too? You know, I am beginning to see little glimmers of this, of sort of this pro-aging uh, concept uh, kind of leaking through, and you even see it in media. There are some advertisers now who back away from the term anti-aging. I mean, you still see it, like, get this anti-aging lotion, get this anti-aging makeup, as yep. if the last thing you want to do is age, even though it is the most natural thing in the world. But right. you do see people backing away from that. You do see pro-aging groups sort of popping up around the country. Older people my age and younger and your age too, Deborah, who are saying, you know, I just don't buy into this. I don't buy into the fact that this is the end and that mm -hmm. I've got to like pedal, pedal even faster to be as young as possible. That isn't, mm -hmm. first of all, that's a ridiculous idea because nature intends us to age. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, trying to go up against nature it is a daunting task. But, you know, you also do see people call themselves elders. And I think it was Frances McDormand, the uh, actor here in the United States, who won the Oscar for um, Nomad Land this last time around, who was in her, I think she's 64 or something, but she calls herself an elder. And I loved hearing that. What a wonderful role model she is. And another thing I like about her is that there's no pretense in her appearance. She's obviously not had any kind of plastic surgery and good for her. She looks great. Mm -hmm. She doesn't wear a lot of makeup. She's just who she is. And when you talked about, you know, this is a time when I can be who I am. Oh, it is so freeing. 
I mean, I dress differently now. I wear my clothes are much more casual and flowy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I wear a lot of rings now, which I did. You know, when I was working and had to kind of conform to maybe a dress code of sorts, I didn't feel I could let my real self out. Mm -hmm. But now I can let my real self out. I have a, a really good friend who always has some color streaked in her hair, purple or pink. She's 73 too, just like I am. And I always can't wait to see her to see what color she's sporting in her silver hair. So see, it's fun. It yeah. really is. Yeah. I think if more of us um, give ourselves permission to, to, as I, as I felt like I'm stepping into my life, I'm not on the outskirts looking in on my life or trying to conform, as you mentioned, but just to be who I am and dress how I feel like dressing. When we see that happening, when we see a really positive picture of what aging is, I think we can turn this ship around. I really do. I think we can too. And one of the things I also mentioned in my book is that, you know, this is a pretty large group of people we have here, people over 50. There are about 100 million of us. That's a mm -hmm. lot of yep. folks. <laughs> and I think if we all begin to say, hey, wait a minute, we're not buying into, first of all, this marketing machine that tells us to buy all these things to make us look younger, we're done with that. We are where we are, and we're going to age naturally. I think it could make a big difference in how this culture views aging. I mean, it really, it is up to us to begin to make these changes, and we have to, to feel good about where we are and proud of our mm -hmm. maturity. Absolutely. So you, you talked about your book. Your book is called Reclaim Your Right to Grow Old, How to Immerse Yourself in, Be Curious About, and Celebrate Life's Most Important Stage. What are you hoping that our readers would discover? Well, I hope they're going to discover that as they grow older, there are really a lot of things to look forward to. It, it isn't uh, it isn't a sad ride on the down slope. It really <laughs> isn't. Now, I'm not saying there aren't physical challenges, and I'm not saying there aren't sometimes cognitive challenges. But what I'm saying is there is such a freedom that comes from knowing who you really are, where you sort of fit in in the life cycle and the ability to have more patience with people, to see younger people as people who are blossoming. How can I help them blossom more? What can I do to encourage them? And this all sort of comes naturally as you age. It's, it's remarkable how you do change as you grow older and these are wonderful things. I mean, do you look as good in a bikini when you're 73 as I did when I was 23? Probably not, but it depends on who's looking. <laughs> That's exactly it, right? It's it's a perspective that I think we've got to change our perspective first. Um, yes. And then even not care about who is looking. <laughs> exactly. And that's part of it, too. It's throwing off those societal constraints and saying, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to be myself and I'm going to do what I want to do. Uh, and I'm a valued member of society. So you should respect that. Absolutely. I uh, One of the taglines on my website, and it's changed uh, a couple of times, but uh, one of them was age with attitude. And I know that I've listened to some of your podcasts with other people when, when people are talking about aging gracefully. Do you want to talk about those, those two phrases and, and, and why you have an opinion on both of them? <laughs> Yeah, I do have an opinion on them. I don't like that term very much, the idea of aging gracefully. And the reason, Deborah, is that I think when you tell older people to age gracefully, um, you are saying, in essence, there's something wrong with this natural process of aging. You don't ask a kid 
to be a child gracefully. Well, go out and play, Johnny, but remember, do it gracefully. <laughs> no, of course not. You'd say, go out, have fun. And uh, it's as if we have to tiptoe around these later years in order to please the people who started putting dead people in graveyards because they were afraid. <laughs> yeah. So they're a little afraid of us. Uh, we might, you know, fly off the handle or something or dye our hair pink or no, we need to, we shouldn't be a bother. We should uh, be sort of quiet, you know, and have the grandchildren over all the time and do what nice older people do. Well, you can have your grandchildren over as much as you want, but I say fooey to being <laughs> a nice little old lady. I mean, I'm a kind of a flamboyant personality and, uh, and I'm going to continue to be as long as I am here. And you know what? I am not aging gracefully. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> and that's why I changed the phrase to age your way, because everybody's way is different, isn't it? If you're flamboyant yes. and you want to stay that way, or if you are quiet and you just want to, you know, sit in the corner with a, a, a grandchild on your knee and, and tell stories. I mean, that's, that's great too. And even the storytelling aspect, I didn't even cover that. We have so many stories to share that mm, story mm -hmm. time needs to come back too. And that was one of my podcast is the art of storytelling, which we're losing because nobody is stopping and listening to the stories that people have to share. So I think we've got a lot to learn. I've got, we've got a lot to learn from each other. We got a lot to learn from your book and I'm so glad you, you wrote it. Um, and so where, where can people find your book? Well, you can go to my website, grow old, be happy dot com grow old be happy all one word and you can order it right there you can order it on amazon barnes and noble or you can go to my publisher outskirts press and order it through them and uh i i would love for your listeners to take a look at the book i i think they'd really enjoy it yep i can't wait to read it for myself i i heard that you wrote a book and i checked you out on your website and i haven't even had a chance to read your book yet but that's the next thing on my list to do so it's so nice to to chat with you today to get sort of a, the inside scoop on on something that i'm trying to find my way through because I don't have any uh, role models of going in this direction where I'm just kind of, you know, one step in, in front of the other. And it's so great to meet somebody else that's, that's doing the same thing that has the same passion about changing the way society views aging, because it is wrong. There's nothing right about the way that we were dealing with age and dealing with our elders and the lack of respect and 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 not even focusing on what their needs are. And that's, you know, don't get me started on that. That's another podcast, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you ever so much for for spending some time to share that concept and your your knowledge and your research and everything that you've done. Uh, is there anything, any message that you'd like to leave us with? Well, first of all, I want to say you're a role model. And as you get older, you will become uh, more so, more of a role model. So good for you. Well, my tagline is this, you're only old once. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so make the most of it. That's awesome. Well, thank you. That's been Kathleen O'Brien. And I'm Deborah Jones for Own the Gray. Have a great day. Go to ownthegray.ca to follow us and listen to more great episodes. Or you can listen on Apple, Spotify, Google, iTunes, Amazon Music, Stitcher, and more. This episode of Own the Gray is brought to you by I Am. Discover your unique talents, realize your potential and align to your path. Take the first step to uncover your life purpose by visiting deborahjones.ca slash courses.